Hi everyone, so I wanted to start a weekly reading vlog. But yeah, I just thought I would maybe start vlogging weekly a little bit more often. So we will see how it goes. I do have kind of a busy fun week as well, but I do think I'll get a good bit of reading in. So yeah, I'll talk about the books that I'm currently reading. I'm so close to finishing A Gathering of Shadows. So this is by V. Schwab. It's the second book in the Darker Shade of Magic series. I'm reading these for the first time, so I really want to move on to A Conjuring of Light really soon. I don't know, will it be my next read or I might read something else just to kind of break it up and then go straight to that. So yeah, I'm on page 480 and I think this is like 500 on the dot, so I, I will finish this today. <laughs> but I've been enjoying this so far. I don't like it as much as the first book, A Darker Shade of Magic. It definitely suffers a little bit from middle book syndrome. So far, I've been really liking it. Definitely the first half of the book is quite slow it's kind of like the character is coming to terms with what happened in the first book and then like the pacing really ramps up at the second part with kind of a competition trial element it's really exciting there's definitely points in this book that lila has kind of annoyed me a little bit there is a point in the middle where she does something i don't want to spoil it and i was not rooting for her i hope you get caught and get in trouble for this <laughs> like i was really not rooting for her which is strange but i understand why it needed to happen and stuff there's also a few like romantic subplots in this that i'm not really buying there's kind of like the main romantic plot, which I do get. But there's kind of a few side ones that I was like, oh, I don't see the chemistry there, really. It's kind of like just not hitting as good as the first one, but I'm still really enjoying it. I was debating what star rating I would give it. It's probably definitely a high four star for me at the moment. But yeah, I'm about to finish it. I'm a little bit scared, but really, really enjoying it. I'm also listening to The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. So I'm listening to the audiobook and just now I put in the bookmark to where I am. So I'm about past the quarter mark, I would say. This I'm enjoying. It's a very, very slow book, I have to say. It's about this boy called Theodore. His kind of dad runs out on him. His mother actually dies in this catastrophe. He was in the catastrophe as well, but he survived. And it's kind of the stories of the relationships he's building with who's looking after him at the time and his friendships and stuff. So it's very, very slow paced, which I don't mind. I noticed Donna Tart did this in the Secret History as well. It's very overly detailed. And I do think she could, even in the Secret History as well, she probably could pull back a little bit. But that being said, the, the best part about that is that it's totally immersive. You know exactly what Theodore's thinking. You know what he's seeing. You know what he's experiencing. It's all so detailed that you know exactly what's going on. So I do really like that. You know, there's no questions or anything up in the air. What you see is what you get with this book. Yeah, so when I downloaded Audible, I think it was like something like 32 hours. And I'm someone who has to listen to it on normal speed. I can't speed things up because I would like not concentrate so yeah i think i've hit the like 23 hours mark <laughs> so i do think this is going to take me a while i'm definitely not going to finish this this week but i will be listening to it at points i usually listen to audiobooks when i'm doing really mundane things that don't need brain power so like cleaning i usually like to listen to them when i'm like doing crafts when i'm like journaling or something like that so i might get some of this listened to this week as well and then i think i mentioned this in my august tbr but i think this will be my next read is the ones we burn so this is by rebecca mix so this is about ranka she just wants to like live her life peacefully but she ends up being the token bride for her coven and her goal is to go kill the prince that she sent to marry but she actually finds out the prince is actually really lovely he doesn't want to marry her he wants peace and it's actually the prince's sister that's actually causing a lot of trouble so i haven't heard anything about this but it does the premise sounds quite interesting the coven kind of make her out to be a monster there's a magical plague i'd say she kind of has to choose where her loyalties lie towards in the book i would say but yeah i haven't heard much of this i got this in a book box i think yeah this fairy loot and i do think this is an adult book because i was getting the adult subscription for a little while so yeah i think this will be my next read so i'll probably move on to this tomorrow but yeah i have a few fun things planned i'm going to see the barbie movie i'm going to go out for lunches and stuff like that so i will like take you guys along with me. So yeah, I'm hoping I get a good bit of reading done this week.
better angle. This is not a good angle. <laughs> I just put air and vacuumed my car. So happy with that. I'm going to the Barbie movie. <laughs> so late. Like it's the 19th of August today. There's a big group of us going. I think there's like 11 of us going. We're all going to wear pink, I think, hopefully. Yeah, I'm just very excited to see it. I've seen Oppenheimer, but I haven't seen Barbie yet. So I want to see both. The excitement over the two movies releasing on the same day was so much fun. But yeah, I'm going to see Barbie now. And I can't wait. Heard good things. It's the next day, but I'm wearing the same outfit. <laughs> so just went to get my nails done. I was like inspired by Barbie. Movie was so good. I think it's, I keep saying Ryan Reynolds, but it's Ryan Gosling. He was so good. <laughs> Loved it. I did prefer Oppenheimer. If I'm going to compare the two movies, I know they're so different, but I did prefer Oppenheimer, but it was fun. I really enjoyed it. We had a great time. I didn't vlog any of the before or after, but so yeah, it's just Sunday now. I went for breakfast with some friends and it was really nice. But yeah, definitely gonna go home and do a good bit of reading. So I wanted to wrap up the vlog. I realised I didn't actually sit down to do a reading update at any point, so I'll do it now. I also want to talk about the two books that I got. I might start with them first. So I'm trying not to buy too many books. I'm only buying books now if I really, really, really want them, rather than just being intrigued by something, just because I really want to get through my physical TBR as much as possible. I had to pick up these two. <laughs> so the first one I saw was Idle Burning. So this is by Rin Usami. So yeah, I saw this on Waterstones. I've been looking for this for a really long time and I did not realise how small it is. And this is a translated work, I think originally from Japanese. I thought this would be a really interesting concept because it's about this high school girl called Akari. She is obsessed with this Japanese idol singer. She has this total like parasocial relationship with him. I think she creates like this fan, I don't know, is it like a fan account for him? And like he takes up all of her day. So I just thought that that would be really interesting. And then apparently he's like disgraced and he's cancelled. And I think it's how she has to deal with him being cancelled and what that means to be his fan still. So I just thought that was a very interesting concept because this stuff happens. So it's interesting. But yeah, I did not realise this was so short. I wonder, will it like look into the dark side of fan culture or parasocial relationships. But yeah, this is super popular. It says over 800,000 copies sold worldwide. Yeah, very good things. And then I picked up Magnolia Parks. So this is by Jessa Hastings. I think there's also, the second book is Daisy Hakes. And I think both books have a sequel. So I think there's four books all together of the Magnolia Parks series. And I think another one is coming out in the spring. Please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not quite sure. But these just came out with new covers. These had like very unusual covers, but like these are the, the new ones. I saw it so I thought I would pick it up. So this is about like two British like socialites. They have like this really toxic relationship. A little bit like Blair and Chuck from Gossip Girl, I, I'm getting. But I think Magnolia Parks isn't like glorifying toxic relationships. I think it's actually at its core like making fun of it and making it entertaining. Kind of like Gossip Girl. I've heard some people like love 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 this book so I really wanted to try it. It sounds really fun and I loved Gossip Girl so reminding me of that so much. Definitely can't wait to read these. So yeah I'll move on to the books that I'm I've read or I'm in the middle of. I think this is good like the, I started this vlog exactly a week ago so this is a good realistic 
look at what I read in a week. Now in fairness I was nearly finished this. <laughs> I did finish this off. So this is Gathering of Shadows, the sequel to Darker Shade of Magic. There's the third book Conjuring of Light and then The Fragile Threads of Power is coming out this autumn I think or really really soon. I need to read Conjuring of Light before that comes out though. <laughs> so this book I really really enjoyed it but not as much as the first book. I gave A Darker Shade of Magic five stars and I gave this one four. I just didn't hit the spot as much but it was still like such an enjoyable book that I gave it four stars. This definitely 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 suffers from middle book syndrome. It's very much B. Schwab is thinking of the start and the end of the trilogy and this is kind of just smack dab in the middle and it's very much reads like that which is a little bit it's okay but it's a little bit unfortunate. To be honest I didn't mind the pacing so basically this first half of this book are the characters just kind of like coming to terms with what happened in the first book. It's about four months later, they're getting on with life, they're kind of processing the trauma. However, the second half of this is like a trial kind of tournament, which is really, really interesting as well. It's really not the main plot of this book. It's definitely just kind of like in the background. I think the ca it's definitely more of a character book than a plot book. If that makes sense. I feel like just the tournament is just kind of a, really just a backdrop for the characters in this. I found the tournament very entertaining. The ending of this is excellent so I won't spoil anything but it is just very dramatic and it makes you want to read the next book. I won't say any more. I think my one gripe with this book, I, di I didn't really mind that I know it was very slow at the start, didn't really mind it. Lila Bard <laughs> kind of annoyed me in this book. She didn't in the first book and she did in this one. I think I mentioned this before but there's a part in the middle where Lila does something and I was like I hope you get caught, I don't want you to get away with this and I get that she's kind of definitely very morally grey character so you're going to have opinions. However I think Schwab is trying to make you love Lila <laughs> despite everything and I just didn't quite like it. I love all the other characters. I love Kel. I really love Kel. Lila not so much. It's a very I'm not like other girls type character. There's a lot of writing in this that describes Lila as brave and strong and the best thief and all these things. There's so many paragraphs that are like that, that, she, that just describes Lila. And I'm like, don't tell me, show me, because I'm not seeing it in this book. I think her getting to grips with magic is really entertaining. And don't get me wrong, I don't dislike her. But it was just, I don't know what she written the best in this book. And I hope we kind of get redemption for her in the third book. Uh, because I, yeah, I fell out of love with her a little bit. But yeah, ending is amazing. This book just definitely starts off slow and ramps up to as fast paced as you can think. I love all the other characters and I can't wait to get to the rest of the series. So do you know what? I actually listened to a lot of The Goldfinch. So I put a bookmark in where I am and I'm actually nearly halfway now, which is really good because this is a chunky book. <laughs> I don't know how many hours I have left. I think I've got like 18 or so. At this point, I don't know how much I'm enjoying this book. It's definitely a slower paced. It's a very detailed book. It's very much a character study of Theo and his life and the circumstances of his life and what influences him and what circumstances changes his personality. It's very, very interesting. It is interesting. However, I am just finding it a little bit as a reading experience. I'm not finding it super entertaining, though I am excited to see what happens because I think this whole showing every detail of Theo's childhood and now adolescence is basically showing you how he becomes a criminal and I think it's really interesting however it's just a bit slow <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. It's just I think what it is is it's a little bit sad and I think it's very sad and heavy even though I know it's a very interesting story I think every time I listen to it I'm like okay what's wrong with Fiona? Because <laughs> he goes through a lot of trauma he's at the stage now he's kind of like late teens at the start of this book, I was like, how is this boy going to become a criminal? Even after his mother dies, do he meet certain people? I'm like, how is this boy going to become a criminal? Now you do. <laughs> Halfway through the book, now you do. He's just definitely fallen into the wrong crowd where he's living at the moment. Just the friends that he's made and just really bad habits. He seems to have no remorse for anything either. He just seems to be coping. So it is a good book on coping with trauma in a very unhealthy way at the moment. <laughs> I hope the plot kind of ramps up a little bit. That's kind of what I'm hoping. And I think it will. I am very optimistic about this book. I really love The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I'm not loving this as much as that, 
that's a top tier book though. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm gonna have a lot to say when I finish this. And then the other book I'm in the middle of is The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mix. So yeah, I'm just up to chapter 20 now, which is page 120. I'm just past part one, so I've just started part two. I thought this was an adult book. This is actually YA. I thought when I started the book, the character Ranka is the main character. I was imagining this like near 30 year old woman. Actually, she's a teenager. <laughs> So it is actually a young adult book. So I'm really liking this so far. I think the writing I'm not crazy about. I think the writing can be slightly cringy in places, maybe just slightly juvenile, but definitely not the worst. The plot is really good. I think the world that Mix has made is really, really interesting. I'm just not 100% sure the writing is for me. I'm definitely, definitely going to continue and I am enjoying it. You have this world where there's humans and witches. Humans can do magic. However, witches are kind of physically different to humans, so they're very much separated. Branca's from this people group at the north of the country and the royal family and humans live in the south. To stop wars, basically there's this treaty, so every time a bloodwin is born, the bloodwin is sent to the royal family to be, to be married off to the royal family just to keep the treaty in place. So Branca is a bloodwin which is basically, a, it's a little bit werewolfy. That's what I'm realizing. It's this kind of overwhelming, like hunter sense that comes over Ranka. She has to kill something in order to return to normal. So she basically becomes like this monster. She's been sent to the royal family now. I'm at the point in the book where she's getting to know the royal family. So there's the prince that she's engaged to and his twin sister. And then there's also an ambassador from another country who's kind of like in their group. She's just kind of getting to know them now at this point in the book. She's kind of realizing they're not so bad. There's this plague coming over the city and they're just trying to, at this point, getting to the bottom of it. Ranka originally agreed to do this because her adoptive sister basically has gone missing. So she thinks she's in the city somewhere that she was taken captive. So she's trying to find where she is. But yeah, the plot's very good. I'm very intrigued to see what happens. I really like the characters. Ranka's definitely a good example of a character who has gone through a lot and she's trying to heal. Like she really just wanted to be left alone, but she has to do this job because she's kind of the chosen one. But yeah, it's interesting. I hope I really enjoy it now to the end. So far I've been, it has been good. But yeah, just maybe some parts of the writing, I was a little bit like, mm. like this is a total fantasy realm where there's a few modern words like thrown in, which I don't quite like, <laughs> or maybe very modern kind of dialogue or something like that. I kind of wish it was a little bit more medieval in ways um, to suit the setting. But that's just me. Uh, someone else reading this might not think that at all. That's what I realistically read in a week. I didn't start and finish anything in this vlog, but that's realistic. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, I do anything book related on this channel. So reading vlogs like this one, reading wrap ups, TBRs, everything like that. I'll leave all these books on my socials in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.